I'm back in Al Shifa, the largest hospital in Gaza, for the third time this week, where it's still a case of absolute misery. With people still on the floors, it's almost impossible to walk. Critical cases, doctors and nurses absolutely scrambling, people crying out that they need blood for their son and daughter who are dying. There's almost nothing that this team can do, this very small clinical team can do to help all of these people. It's absolute chaos still. And actually, this is even after the hospital staff told us that the fighting has quieted down for the last few days. It's nonstop, 24 hours a day, serious and critical injuries coming in and a very small staff to help them. Today we provided fuel to the hospital so they'll be able to power the, uh, the lights and the machines to allow uh, surgeries to happen. It's a multi-pronged problem. It's a very challenging situation, uh, but we're trying to tackle the different elements of this at the, uh, at, at the same time to allow small elements of the hospital to come back online. There's the risk of a famine here in Gaza, actually. And even here in the hospital, everybody says that they only have rice. They have very often only one meal a day uh, and they're hungry. So. You know, we've brought medical supplies here, we've brought surgical supplies here. Everybody wants food. And we're currently in the kitchen trying to find a way that we can reactivate this kitchen. Okay, we are here in the city of Gaza, in the heart of the city of Gaza, in Shifa Hospital. And this is what Hamas is trying to hide from you. We found a vehicle 
filled with ammunition, uh, RPGs, AK-47s. We see handcuffs, knives, preparation for taking hostages from Israel on the attack of 7, uh, October 7th. As you can see, they were very well prepared and where they're hiding all of this equipment is in a hospital, a place that's supposed to be for humanitarian aid. They have all this evil hidden here. As we can see, we are in the heart of the hospital. And this is where they choose to hide everything because they know the IDF won't attack, the Air Force won't attack here. So they use the hospital as human shields. I'm in Al Shifa Hospital again, where I was four days ago. And we're currently in a surgical building where two days ago, 12 people, people who were living here, were killed uh, when the hospital received shelling and other fire. You can see the bullet holes in the windows and in the building uh, behind me. This morning here in Shifa Hospital, one person was killed in the courtyard of the hospital, apparently by a sniper. At the same time, the hospital is running out of fuel. It has very few staff. We've just brought some additional medical supplies and we talked about bringing in a team of surgeons and uh, additional uh, providers, doctors, nurses. But actually what the, the staff said is what the hospital first needs is fuel. Fuel is the blood of a hospital. It's what makes the generator run, what keeps the lights on, which makes all the machines work. And until we can get fuel here, bringing a team of surgeons, surgical equipment, is going to do very little. Mostly what they're doing here is trauma stabilization, providing some pain management, some wound care. Uh, but how can that hospital function without fuel and when it's coming under attack? The same day. Two days one, ago? One, yes, one from there. And I'm standing in the surgical building of Al Shifa Hospital where two days ago, this hospital was hit by artillery shells and you can see the gaping hole in the wall behind me and the absolute destruction from this attack on Gaza's largest hospital and most important healthcare facility. Not only is this the surgical building where normally 20 operating theaters would function, but currently it's home to thousands of internally displaced persons who are coming under attack on the grounds of a hospital. It's completely unacceptable for patients and hospital staff to be unsafe in what should be the safest place for anybody who is in need of care.